that is what I'm talking about. So now you can do a Forge Friday video. Hello, welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today we are doing another edition of Forage Friday. And today we are spotlighting Chantrell, Chantrell mushrooms. mushrooms. Today we are at a friend's property where last year we found an overabundance of chanterelle mushrooms. And this year we are hoping to repeat, if not surpass that. So come take a walk with us and let's find what kind of chanterelle mushrooms are hiding out in the woods today. Chanterelle mushrooms are pretty easy to identify if you know what you're looking for. Uh, they do not grow in clusters. You can find them usually by looking for this color, although there are some red cinnabar uh, chanterelle mushrooms that are much smaller and hopefully we'll find some of those later. But you can identify them further by cutting one at the base. This is a good harvesting practice. Um, cut it at the base and then look underneath. Let's get it in the light here. Take that pine straw off. All right, if you look closely, you see the gills run straight down the, the stem of the mushroom. They have a trumpet looking shape and they do not have a hollow stem. They have a solid stem. So that's a pretty good way to identify chanterelle mushrooms. I interrupt today's special Forge Friday to fill in some information that I did not get when we were out in the woods on camera. So one of the main things I wanted to point out is the fact that chanterelles have what we call a primitive gill. So when, when I say in the video that the gills run down the stem, they're not true mushroom gills. If you look closely, you will see that they are more like grooves than they are like gills. Gills run flat and straight lines, whereas these grooves are in more like ridges and they're not in straight lines and they're not all in one line. Some of them are forked do you see what I'm talking about there? So on other mushrooms, these gills here, don't mind my dirty nails, um, these gills here would be like flaps, like you could flap them. They would be like a page of a notebook. But on chanterelles, they are actually built in to the mushroom flesh itself. You see? very different than other mushrooms. And one of the very important reasons why I'm telling you that is because the false chanterelle or the jack-o'-lantern mushrooms, which are the two lookalikes to chanterelles, are the ones that you have to watch out for because they can cause serious stomach upset if you mix them up. False chanterelles will grow a lot similar conditions than the regular chanterelles but they have actual gills. And they're not as common. You, you're gonna find chanterelles more likely than you're gonna find false chanterelles. And then the jack-o'-lanterns are kind of common, but they grow in clumps. They don't grow spread out by themselves. And something else that I wanted to point out is that when you are learning about mushrooms, it is a very good idea to learn how to do a spore print and to get a spore print of a mushroom before you are able to make a definite, definitive ID on that mushroom. Wild mushrooms especially must be cooked before consuming. It is not recommended to eat raw wild foraged mushrooms. There's some belief that there's bacteria that could be existing from the forest on these mushrooms that is not safe to ingest without cooking first. 
so it's always a good idea to cook your foraged mushrooms before you eat them. It's never recommended to eat them raw. So I'll let you get back to the Forage Friday video. All right, if you look closely, you will see that we did not take every single last mushroom. We left the younger ones behind. We could come back and get them next week if we choose, but it's always a good idea to leave some so they can spread their spores to help procreate so there'll be even more mushrooms uh, in times to come. We still got an entire grocery bag. One note, don't ever go mushroom hunting with a grocery bag. You're supposed to use an onion bag that has holes in it that allows the spores to fall as you walk. I forgot to bring mine and this was all I had. Um, or a basket, usually. I like baskets, they have holes in them too. So here are some chanterelles that are a little bit paler in color. They're more yellowy than orange, and that's probably because they're a little bit older. See the difference in the two. So you guys look around, and you'll see what kind of environment that we're in, where these chanterelle mushrooms are just so uh, abundant and they're thriving out here. We have nice filtered sunlight that comes through these trees. You see the spotty areas of sunshine and shade. Um, got a combination of pine and hardwood and other softwood trees. So we have a good uh, combination of trees out here. They like to grow all over the place out here. They grow underneath brush, next to logs, under leaves. They're there, you just have to know what to look for. This chanterelle is slightly different. This is what they call smooth chanterelle, where it almost has no gills. This almost has no gills at all. See how smooth it is? This is what they call smooth chanterelle. Still a chanterelle, still lovely edible, almost identical to the other ones we were finding, but the gills are almost non-existent. Now we're in a different section of the woods uh, where there's also the chanterelle that we found earlier, but this last year is where we found the cinnabar chanterelles as well. So hopefully we'll see those again. they are these are so tiny and so cool because we rarely find them these are cinnabar chanterelles so these start out as just the tiniest tiniest fleck of red coming out of the earth just barely even can see them just itty bitty and they do not get much bigger than this. This is about as big as I've seen them. Maybe slightly bigger. But look at this. Can you see this, Ryan? You see just the tinge, it looks like paint splatter. That's how they start. So you leave that leaf litter on there. A lot of times mushroom hunters will come and pull away the leaf litter because they want it to grow better. It's actually best to leave the leaf litter on and keep that moist and happy. Did you have fun? Yeah. I did too. I love, I love foraging for mushrooms with you. I love foraging for mushrooms with you too. <laughs> I love foraging anything with this woman. Oh. <laughs> anyway, anyway. You're so sweet. All right, well, are we gonna do the drill thing? Yeah. All right, well, thanks for watching. You know the drill. And we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.